Welcome to News Today with WW News Today. I'm Tom Corliss. Here now the news for December 6, 2019. In anticipation of the large crowds at Disney's Hollywood Studios for the uh, now open Rise of the Resistance attraction, Disney announced that boarding groups would be in effect throughout opening day and beyond. This is different from the original boarding group concept in that the virtual queue will be specifically for the new ride and not the land as a whole, so you can get into the land no problem. When we first entered the park, we were handed uh, an informational pamphlet about how to join the virtual queue. To confirm your boarding group, guests had to check in with cast members before even entering Galaxy's Edge. On day one, distribution for boarding groups ended just before 9 a.m., with just over 150 groups uh, scheduled throughout the day. Uh, last night, guests in later boarding groups were denied access to the attraction after having waited all day. They didn't make it to those groups. Guests whose boarding groups were not able to be accommodated received an anytime fast pass for the attraction, plus one-day park hopper tickets as a means of guest recovery. The park has quietly opened uh, at 6 a.m. these days. Today, uh, the land was open at 6 a.m. Uh, despite an official listed park open of 8 a.m. and 9 a.m. respectively. Uh, boarding group distribution today ended before official park opening at 8, 10 a.m. So my uh, advice to you is if this is still going on when you visit, get there early. We arrived uh, yesterday at 6 o'clock. We got two rides in. Um, today we were there at 6.30 a.m. and we were able to get two boarding groups before all that closed. We were on the ride the first time at 7 a.m. and then we had a boarding group that ended up being a 1 o'clock. So um, if it's important for you to ride and to ride maybe more than once uh, and it's that great that you're going to want to, um, you should keep that all uh, in mind. Of course, yesterday the Rise of the Resistance attraction broke down in the early a.m. hours for a brief period of time. Uh, other than that, it, it seemed to go all right. Uh, today was a little rougher. There were several breakdowns today. Uh, regardless, obviously, you'll want to be patient as the ride is a marvel. It's really magnificent. It's going to be worth it. We could certainly go into, you know, why does management open things before they're ready and, and oh, it's just complicated. You've got to give them time and all those things. But um, all in all, I, I will say um, I have a full uh, couple thousand word review up at www.nt.com, so I won't bore you here. Um, and of course, there's a full ride POV video um, right here on our channel as well. But it is um, the most spectacular thing that's been built here in the U.S. parks. And I think it's a, uh, a pivotal moment um, in, the, in the future of these parks. I think it's going to be an eye-opening moment for a lot of people. Uh, I think you're going to see what can be done when the company opens that pocketbook up and really lets Imagineering do what they can do. And they can still do Pirates of the Caribbean and Haunted Mansion and all of those things. Um, they can still create things as meaningful and as wonderful as uh, those were. And Rise of the Resistance is one of those things. And so I think it's, it's going to be a really great moment, I think. Um, it, in that it, I think American audiences are going to get uh, to finally understand that, oh, this is what can be done and that it still can be done. I think it's, it's going to be interesting to see how a, a couple of the things coming up the next two years are going to be received after how great uh, this turned out. But nonetheless, you can read all my thoughts again on the site. The full POV of this unbelievable ride are up uh, right here on our YouTube channel. Disney's Riviera Resort opens in just over a week, and Good Morning America shared an exclusive look inside the hotel with views of the resort's mosaic inlaid uh, entry area and lavish modern lounge spaces and sitting areas. Upon entering what we believe will be the uh, entrance area, you see the resort's logo, a pair of two intertwined R's for Riviera Resort, inlaid in mosaic tile on the floor. Benches line the cobblestone floors leading up to the lobby entrance. And once inside, there's plenty of warm lighting, quartz tile flooring, and intricate designs lining the walls. Of course, right away, you see some of the intricate lighting fixtures with some modernist art of the Riviera countryside in the background. We get a small taste of the breakfast spread at Topolino's Terrace, which includes pastries, quiche, and waffles. Of course, you can view the full menu for that at www.nt.com. The big reveal is the exclusive new outfits that Mickey, Minnie, Daisy, and Donald will be wearing at the character breakfast. Minnie dressed as a poet with pages from her published work uh, comprising her sassy A-line dress. Uh, Mickey sports a beret and he's wearing some fun paint splattered overalls as a painter. In a similar fashion, Donald wears a clay dusted apron as a sculptor and Daisy is a classically trained dancer and wears an aqua bodysuit with a pink headscarf and tutu. 
Altogether, you could say the gang make for a very colorful addition to the restaurant, which will feature authentic dishes infused with French and Italian flavors at dinner time, while offering picturesque, picturesque vistas of the nighttime spectaculars of Epcot and Disney's Hollywood Studios. Of course, the official Disney's Riviera Resort map has also been released. Listed on the map, you have the lobby located on the second floor alongside the DVC Information Center. On the first floor, you'll have resort airline check-in. The parking lot will be outfitted with electrical vehicle charging stations. The resort will have three main sections with the main building in the middle, flanked by a west wing and an east wing. You have the, uh, I'm going to pronounce this wrong, the Beau Soleil Pool, which will act as the quiet pool of sorts near the west wing, compared to the larger Riviera Pool near the east wing, which will also feature the Si Vous Play water area. Water play area. The resort store, La Boutique, will be located on the second floor. And dining will be spread out throughout the resort with Topolino's Terrace on the 10th floor of the East Wing, Primo Piatto, and Bar Riva, the resort's two quick service dining locations on the first floor of the East Wing near the pool, and Le Petit Cafe, the resort's coffee and pastry bar on the second floor of the main building. One of the highlights of the resort is its Disney Skyliner station, which will be located to the side of the West Wing. The bus stop, however, will be located slightly further off from the main entrance. Um, of course, we are staying at uh, Disney's Riviera Resort the opening two nights. Uh, we have reservations for breakfast and dinner at Topolino Terrace. We'll be trying the counter service, restaurants, the bars, everything. We'll be checking out the pools. Uh, so stay tuned for all that coverage in the coming days. I believe it opens on the 16th. Yesterday, the Oriental Land Company revealed details on the upcoming Tokyo Disneyland expansion opening April 15th. Soaring to a height of around 100 feet, Beast Castle is the headliner attraction of this new expansion. The ride will be a trackless experience building on technologies from the nearby Pooh's Honey Hunt and the new Star Wars Rise of the Resistance at Disneyland and Hollywood Studios. The ride will be approximately eight minutes long, that's longer than Rise by the way, and offer fast pass, single rider, and happy 15 entry perks. Bell's Village is the largest visible part of the expansion. At its entrance is Maurice's Cottage. That will just house the fast pass machines. That's right, they built a house for fast pass. Once you move further in, you'll have shops on your right and La Taverne de Gaston and Le Fou's snack shop on your left. The new counter service restaurant La Taverne de Gaston is modeled after Gaston's tavern from the film. We'll see 200 guests. Hearty fare prefer, uh, preferred by Gaston will be available to guests here. The village shops will consist of three interconnected and highly themed shopping experiences. There's La Belle Library, themed around Belle's favorite bookshop. Little Town Traders is the town's general store where the village people sell their wares and mark trades, or make trades, excuse me. And over at Bonjour Gifts, the theme is the village tailor. Over 100 types of new Fantasyland merchandise themed to the enchanted tale of Beauty and the Beast and Mickey's Magical Music World will be on sale at the village shops. That's, uh, that Music World is the uh, new stage show going in that Fantasyland theater. As you exit the village, you'll enter the Enchanted Forest, which is home to the Enchanted Tale of Beauty and the Beast and the Fantasyland Forest Theater. In the theater, the brand new show, Mickey's Magical Music World, will premiere. This show, original to Tokyo Disneyland, will feature songs and dances, as well as practical effects, projection mapping, and live performances by cast members. The Fantasyland Forest Theater will seat 1,500 guests per show. Mickey's Magic, Magical Music World will perform five to nine times per day. The demand is there, folks. The Happy Ride with Baymax will open as part of the expansion on the Tomorrowland side. It will be similar experience to Mater's Junkyard Jamboree or Alien Swirling Saucers. This is the world's first attraction themed to Big Hero 6. The attraction is sponsored by the, I'm going to butcher this, the Daihatsu Motor Company and will offer Fast Pass as well. Adjacent to the Happy Ride with Baymax is Tokyo Disney Resort's first all-popcorn restaurant, the Big Pop. I'm really excited about this. Appropriate to the Tomorrowland surroundings, the shop is themed to outer space. Hanging from the starry ceiling is a huge popcorn chandelier representing the Big Bang that created the universe. Or the Ding Dang, if you want to call it that. Uh, massive windows in and around the facility will allow guests to view the popcorn being made. The Big Pop will offer multiple types of popcorn buckets as well as three new popcorn flavors you won't find anywhere else, including cookies and cream, caramel and cheese, and, oh, my favorite, strawberry milk. Tastes just like Nestle and strawberry milk. It's really great. Uh, for the very first time at Tokyo Disneyland, Minnie will have her own dedicated greeting spot. Minnie Style Studio is where Minnie Mouse designs, creates, and photographs her new fashions. Guests will meet Minnie in the photo studio where she will greet them wearing her latest high fashion design for the season. If you love the new costumes at Minnie Style Studio, special themed merchandise will be available for her in every season. For the spring outfit, eight special merchandise items will be available at Toontown Five and Dime, including plushes and headbands. 
this expansion is so exciting, especially just after seeing Rise, uh, knowing that the Beauty and the Beast ride will be of similar technology and but longer. Um, it's it's uh, very exciting. Of course, we will be there um, April fifteenth for the grand opening of all that. So make sure you stay tuned. I know it's a couple months away, but we're uh, we're getting ready to cover all that. It's going to be a real big deal. For more information on these stories and more, head on over to WWNT.com as well. We have a list of all the food and merchandise uh, coming out at Tokyo Disneyland in that new expansion. If you're enjoying the show, be sure to like this video, subscribe to WDW News Today on YouTube for more great content, and click the bell for notifications. For the worldwide leader in Disney Parks news, this is Tom Corliss saying enjoy the rest of your today and till the spire. Now I'm going to go play. I'm going to play with my uh, Rise of the Resistance toy now. My escape pod. Buttons on this side.